You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all new. The whole world gone mad? What's going on? How can they do that? Can Christians have demons? Why are politicians so detached? Need answers to these questions? You'll find it here, scottinsler.org, where you will hear the facts. When it comes to the biblical truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, about what's really going on in America and the rest of the world. scotthensler.org reveals what the churches in America fail to tell you about the true spirit realm concerning demonic activity, mental illness, and even the basis of hardcore evil that is sweeping mankind. Remember, you cannot negotiate with evil, you have to eradicate it. It's not too late. That's right, as I said before, if you're drawing breath, if you've got blood flowing through your veins, you're walking, you're conscious, it is not too late. Even if you were to, let's say, flatline, and you're being drawn to the light, don't go to the light. Call out to the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, the Son of the Most High God. Ask for forgiveness. Repent and come back and serve the Most High. I'm your host, Scott Hensler, on scotthensler.org, using Blog Talk Radio. I wanted to mention real quickly before we go any further, I've been asked to be a co-host and guest on Walking Among Spirits on Blog Talk Radio with Teresa McGillan. Her shows are pretty steady from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, for the next week or so, two weeks, I'll, I will be there on those days. Um, if you have questions, I invite you to attend. Uh, normally, they're two hours, and we cover literally everything. We have open phones, and we have chat rooms. We've got it all. Well, let me get right into what uh, what I'm trying to uh, get across to everybody here on these spiritual stargates, or stargates in themselves and the portals, and the sightings of different animals and different beings and creatures, such as Bigfoot, and the Indians refer to it as Sasquatch, or known as the Yetis in the Himalayas. These creatures, these beings, uh, in my opinion, are actually coming in and out of the spirit realm. There are fractures, there are different things that take place before, referred to as stargates, portals, gateways, channels, open doors, and fractures into the spirit realm, the other dimensions. And things such as Bigfoot, you know, the Sasquatch, the Yeti, uh, are able to come and go when they want for whatever reason. And they, these appear to be all over the country, all over the world, some areas more than others. Uh, in my opinion, whatever was the original open doorway to allow these things to enter, I'm not sure, but I suspect that some of them were where there was sins committed. Otherwise, there were killings, murders, crimes against man, crimes against God's children, and these areas are no longer holy. They no longer hold true to uh, the protection because of the sins that were committed, and these are fractures that allow the spirits to come in and out. Now, <clears throat> whether they're demons whether they're hybrids, whether they're, you know, the smelly, stinky animals known as Bigfoot that let out a terrible shrill and that are very large in size, most likely have something to do with the Nephilim breed 
and possibly even the experiment that has taken place, such as in the 40s and 50s, with opening portals and gateways, that these may actually be hybrids. If you go to my website at scotthensler.org and go to the Nephilim uh, tag, the link, that will take you to the page where I've been uh, updating all the information that I have studied and researched and come across, and even what I have experienced. Now, if you think these things don't exist, uh, let me tell you a story before I became a Christian. Now, <clears throat> I spent 47 years in Arizona. Uh, I was in search and rescue. I did law enforcement, assisting law enforcement. I was in the electronics industry. I did just about everything, ham radio. And so I was a very, very active individual, which included the outdoors. I spent a lot of time in North Arizona above Payson, uh, the Payson Plateau, the Mogollon Rim, uh, in those areas. And there's a phenomenon that has been taking place, probably became more known at the turn of the century as the Mogollon Monster up in the Tunnel Creek area, Tunnel Plateau, uh, the rim itself. And those who are listening from Arizona know the area well. Well, I frequent that area quite a bit. Now, the rim trail that runs east to west along the Mogollon has several offshoots. And one of them that I enjoyed going to was at Washington Park, which was north of Houston Mesa, the east uh, eastern section of uh, Tonto Creek, I believe it is, or, yeah, Tonto Creek, comes from that. There's a penstock that comes down over the top, down from Blue Ridge Reservoir, and there's some beautiful trails up there. Well, <clears throat> I've had two instances uh, to find where I believe that I had actually encountered that. Uh, when I was going to uh, attending the Boy Scouts, we would go up there, and I used to hear all the different um, you know, local legends and so forth about Bigfoot and even saw some of the uh, clay um, clay forms that they poured into the footprints to, to you know, capture those. Now, the trail that I used to go up above Houston Mesa there at Washington Park, there was this 50-foot stretch. Now, this was before I was a Christian. There was this 50-foot stretch. When, when I would enter into it, it was like a wall. And I would cross over, and I could literally feel the temperature drop many degrees. How many? I don't know. There was an airiness about it. There was a still and a quietness about it. As I would continue up the trail and come out at the other end uh, of this particular, you know, we'll call it a box that was 50 foot. So as I would come out of it, then, then the temperature would rise again. You know, then I could hear the birds and the, and the air blowing and everything else. It was very strange. Well, that area was also a uh, very active area for Indian issues with homesteaders. And there was a lot of uh, killing, uh, pillaging. And General Crook was brought in with his soldiers. Uh, they went up to the Verde Valley, I believe it was, uh, or Fort Verde established a uh, post there that to take care of this. And there was a battle in that area called the Battle of the Big Dry Wash. And there were several uh, Indians, several Indians killed. In fact, they, they, there was enough to take care of the situation. But my point is that blood was spilt in that area. And I believe that that's what had caused that to have the portals, the stargates, wherever you want to refer to them. Now, I'll call that a, a portal because I'm going to get into what I think a stargate is, and I think this is partly man-made. But I believe that uh, the Tower of Babel, Babel was a stargate. Um, I believe that uh, different uh, before the flood and after that because of the fallen angels, there was information able to be passed down that allowed us as humans to use that knowledge to reach into the heavens, which, which really meant reaching into the spirit realm. And so these things occurred. Now, when I became a Christian, several years later, I went back to that same spot and tried to reenact, which had happened many times to me with going into this 
box on the trail where the temperature would drop like I was going into another dimension. Once I became a Christian, I was no longer affected by this. It no longer had the same effect on me. Um, and I noticed that the trail eventually, for some reason, wasn't uh, used as much and then faded away. Now, that particular spot, of course, is still there, but the trail seems to have moved away from it. Kind of strange. But about a year and a half ago, I went up there camping. And I always take a firearm with me. I believe in, in uh, firearms, the right to carry, right, for concealed weapons, Second Amendment. Especially if you're going to be up there with your mountain lions and bears um, of that type. And knowing that Sasquatch was very active up there. In fact, uh, the TV program Animal Planet, and then there's uh, a website dedicated to Sasquatch in that area, Mogollon Monster. If you go to my website, you'll see those links. So, so I knew it was a high, high active area. So I was kind of walking into a different area. I stopped to take a break, and there's some lava forms around there that, that are very interesting. And there's also a lot of um, Indian uh, remains, such as petroglyphs and so forth in these areas, which I've come across many that the drawings themselves look like some kind of beast or some type of uh, alien, you know, almost like a, a 1950s, 60s portrayal of an alien. And as I was taking a break, there was a very large thud onto the ground. Now, I've run into elk up there before. Elk are very good size or like the size of horses. But, I mean, this really shook the ground. And a boulder, probably somewhere between 9 to 12 inches in diameter, uh, literally was kicked off of a ledge that wasn't too far from me and rolled my way. Now, even if it was an elk, an elk isn't going to be able to kick something that large that distance. Whatever it was, uh, I believe that it was not a normal animal such as an elk. I believe it was something else. And what it was, I don't know, because I immediately drew my weapon. And I believe that these things are very intelligent and very smart with keen eyesight and agility and speed that it knew that I had that weapon and then, uh, uh, you know, went back and got away. So I went back to camp uh, where I was, you know, parked and so forth, and, you know, there was no incident after that, but um, that was a very startling situation. Now, being a Christian, being someone who believes in the Most High God and that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that on the cross he paid for my sins gives me the strength and the ability and the power to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And if that creature had come at me or whatever it was, it could have just been a spirit, I don't know, but um, it definitely was there, that would I have used my weapon? I don't know. But I would have said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. You will not harm me. You will not hurt me. I cancel your assignment. I send you back to hell where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ, I would have stood against it. And I suggest that if you come across the same situation, whether it's a UFO abduction or any of the other circumstances, that that is the stance that you would take to be in Christ. Now, now um, Nephilim, Nephilim, hybrids. Uh, if you go into my website again at Nephilim for the tag, you'll see that there's been a lot of experiments uh, that have been performed, especially since the 30s and 40s on up, that have been using the DNA of the giants at the grave sites that they found. Uh, and I believe that there was a cooperation with the fallen angels that our government, Chinese, even the Nazis, who originally, by the way, um, Hitler himself was a Luciferian uh, worshiper and called upon Satan for what he had done. It's one of the reasons he specifically attacked the Jews. Of course, he, his plan was to kill all anyways, a eugenics type situation. And so now we're dealing with entities that normally wouldn't have been here, but as Revelation and different parts of scripture, as, you know, as far as um, 
in Genesis 6 describing Noah, it will be as in the days of Noah. And Revelation with the apocalypse and the things that take place, that things will, will be released. Now, as I've studied more into this, I've discovered that man himself, such as the Nazis, the Luciferians, uh, the occultists, um, the Freemasons, the Illuminatis, have been all along working at a super soldier type program. Uh, there's lots of documents out there like that. Some of this may be uh, affiliated with what I experienced and what other people were seeing. Um, some of the things that people do say, they're referred to as shape shifters, shadow people, mothman, along with the reptilian type, half man, half, half uh, animal. And they have uh, the ability to kill and eat. Uh, they kill livestock. Uh, there's been a phenomenon that's taken place along Arizona and California areas where uh, ranchers have lost goats and sheep, have seen creatures actually take them down. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on that. I may do a whole other show on it. It's a, it's a different thing. But the point of it is, is that as we approach these times, and as, it, as, as it's been said, it will be as in the days of Noah, and that the days will be shortened, because if not, there would be no flesh left for Christ, for Christ to return. Uh, that's some pretty serious words coming from Jesus Christ, coming from Scripture, coming from Paul, coming from the apostles that knew far more than we do, that we're very blessed to have spent time with Jesus to have learned these things. Now, getting to, um, to what man is doing, okay, in their quest to control, and these people are demonized, that are Luciferians, that are Illuminati, they think that they are the illuminated ones, that they're able to have abilities and powers beyond the normal human. And what they do have has been given to them through the spirit realm, through fallen angels. Now, again, nobody gets away with anything that's going to sin against God. So even, those peop even though these people have been deceived and are performing and doing these dastard deeds, which is an abomination, just like uh, described in the book of Enoch prior to the flood and, and even after, <clears throat> that these do not have human spirits. These are not given the spirit, when I say human, the spirit given by God, uh, because in the womb, at the point of conception, regardless of what the abortionist, what these eugenics-type individuals who think it's okay to kill a child, uh, you've got a reckoning to deal with, and it is going to be extremely, extremely serious. And... <clears throat> I, uh, I, I uh, would rather be at the feet of Jesus than sifted by Satan. And that's exactly what's going to happen to those who are not in Christ when judgment falls. Now, Tesla <clears throat> was a, a very uh, incredible scientist who had knowledge of electrical theory, physics, that was way beyond his time of the turn of the century on through the you know, 20s, 30s, and 40s. And this information, most likely, why he had it, you know, I don't, I don't know that much about his personal. I know that he suffered in the last days. He was pretty much a hermit. Uh, he may have been getting these things spiritually, um, I would venture to guess because the fact of the knowledge was so intense, so incredible, so specific that really man himself is not going to be able to come up with it. But since I don't know, I don't want to make a statement. He could have been a wonderful man. He was trying to better things. He was trying to better the world through uh, free power uh, instead of Edison who wanted to, you know, to, to contain it and charge everybody for it. So I believe that his heart was in the right place. But of course... When anything has military potential, it can be stolen, taken. Uh, the people who have invented it can be killed for it. And I believe that's exactly what happened with his technology. Now, the Tesla coil is one of the main things that everybody thinks of when they think of Tesla. Well, that has led to the Philadelphia Experiment, Manhattan Project, 
uh, like the USS Eldridge that they actually made disappear. And one movie was described where when it did reappear that the molecules had shifted so much that even the men that were on the ship sometimes were stuck in the hull itself. Um, I believe that this did take place. I believed that through that Tesla coil, they actually energized and opened up a Stargate. And the cases that I've been hearing recently uh, in the past years is that the, uh, <clears throat> the particle generator accelerators are basically doing the same thing, and that this whole science thing that they tell us that you're you know, trying to split the atom for, for science experiments, I believe, are actually institutionalizing stargates or at least experimenting with it. And there have been reports where beings have come in and out of these things. Uh, again, the Illuminati has been in bed with Hollywood for years, and that uh, a lot of the movies that we have seen have been just that. What has been done, what is being done, is being told to the public a little bit at a time, plus with dis disinformation to run us down rabbit trails so we're not you know, we don't figure things out right away. But the Illuminati runs that way. They'll, through articles, through movies, and different people who have radio shows, will tell you these things a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, in order that if you don't do anything about it, that we have knowledge that these things exist, then they feel it gives them the right to continue and that we didn't stand against it which in itself is twisted because if you're not telling the truth, the, truth, the people who, lack, who will perish from lack of knowledge are not going to be able to stand against it. Plus, I, I'm not real happy with the churches in America because these things are real. Demons are real. Hell is real. Jesus is real. God is real. And there really is a battle taking place. And as we approach these end times and this information isn't given to us, we're not trained, we're not taught the truth, then that means we can't stand against it. Now, as I mentioned, when I uh, thought that I was going to run into the um, Mogollon monster, you know, Sasquatch, that if I had gone face-to-face -face with it, uh, I would have stood against it in the name of Jesus. And as it says in, in uh, Revelation, that men's hearts will fail them because of fear. But we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So spirits, fear comes from spirits. It doesn't come from God. And the fact that our hearts will fail us mean that we're going to see things that are going to overwhelm us. Now, the sightings of Sasquatch and, and all the different uh, creatures that I mentioned earlier, entities, are being seen more and more, are being experienced more and more. Uh, in the deliverance ministry that I have been involved with for over a decade, uh, the attacks on women, the attacks on men, but especially on women like the incubus spirit, there has been rapings that have taken place with women. I have dealt with women that have been bruised so bad that they had to seek medical attention. Um, that's pretty serious. Now, I can tell you what, if something thinks that they're going to do that to my family, and if you're not uh, a man who, who is in Christ and you're not standing up against these things, your, your family is at risk. So my advice to you is, Father, head of the household, husbands, get in the Word. You need to start buckling up because the times are coming where these things are going to start being released. Uh, for instance, Louisiana is is experiencing sinkholes, chain link like noises being rattling. Uh, could these possibly be the in, uh, angels, the fallen angels that are bound because they were so horrific that in the end times, uh, as it was in the days of Noah with Revelation, that they will be released? Uh, we've got the Mandarin fault line where uh, seismic activity, earthquakes, and different things are happening where the earth could open up. And scripture is very plain that, that the demons and angels, not all the demons, but they uh, were bound in the earth. And with the earth opening up, we're going to see more of this. With man fooling around with Tesla coils and Manhattan projects and Acceler, you know, the, the, the projects for, for uh, 
the acceleration of atoms, we're going to see more of this. And atomic bombs themselves, by the way, since they split atoms, have a very good chance of causing that same situation where a portal will open up and beings will come in and out. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Cowboy, but that was a Nazi experiment usually using Philadelphia-type uh, experiments with Tesla information, where when they opened it up, a demon came through, and one of the scientists raised the demon, which they named Hellboy, and that's what was basically the movie, and they were portraying that he was a good guy, but you notice, if you see it, they stalled his horns off, and he had super strength and abilities that nobody else had and so forth. Well, you know, again, with the experiments that have been taking place with... Uh, secret government uh, cooperations, as you will see on my website under the Nephilim tab, that these things do take place. They are happening. Uh, we are getting to a time where these things are going to be released more. There's been sightings of the black-eyed children, which are basically hybrids. They're now teenagers. Um, just get ready. The reason that I wanted to do this uh, blog talk cast is the very fact of being ready, because this this is not a time to look the other way. This is not a time to be still in your slumber. This is going to involve you, your spouse, your children, your friends. This is going to be hell on earth. When it says, as in the days of Noah, we need to take that serious, because as it was in the days of Noah, the giants the Nephilim, the Nephilim, there were mass slaughters, killings, fallen angels raping human women, causing them to have children. And now, this DNA that the Illuminati has recovered from the different grave sites have now regenerated hybrids. And Jubilees is very, very plain, uh, the book of Jubilees, stating that the spirits of the Nephilim will re-inhabit the new. So now we're going to have these horrible monsters coming back. And I'll tell you what, um, I would rather be in the Word. I would rather be free of demons uh, to go through deliverance, to repent, to be clean, cleansed, to be healed, and to be ready. And have the authority to stand in the name of Jesus Christ against these things, especially for my family, especially for spouses and those that I would that I love dear, dearly. So, now, <clears throat> real quickly before I go too far here, before we end, there's a TV show that is quite entertaining called Grimm, G-R-I-M-M. -M. Um, being in the deliverance ministry, I find it amusing to watch it. It's, it's actually done quite well. But if you haven't seen it, it takes place in Portland where, the, where people aren't as they seem to be. Uh, it's the same thing with demonic entities, where these things can manifest into different creatures, which basically demons are. They're everything from animal spirits to actually uh, siren spirits. Um, I talked about that earlier, and then I'll go into the, to more depth about that. But in this program where when someone's walking, uh, somebody, a character that is supposedly a Grimm, has the ability to discern and know that these things are really not human beings. And their bloodline of Grimm has a quest of eliminating them. But the way that they show the portraying of manifestation and the different creatures, somebody in Hollywood knows what they're doing, has seen this, has experienced it, I see this in the spirit realm all the time. It does not surprise me. And again, and again, the Illuminati is very good about letting us know what's coming. So I'll tell you what, you better buckle up. You better get ready. Jesus Christ, you will not get to God unless you come through Christ. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. He's our Lord and Savior. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to these people and give them the dreams and visions necessary with words of knowledge to know exactly what they're to do in the end times. God bless. You're listening to the All-New KBLU Radio Network.
That's the Blu-ray Men Network. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to me all day. Never replicated. You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network, Blue Raven Network.